Suf Suf Red Jazz, the ultimate experience. On the fringe of St. Lucia Jazz, yet taking main focus, is the Suf Red Jazz, the ultimate experience. Featuring Tarleton Legend, Future Lights, Rob Zai and Finesse, TYP, Ricky T, Jettison John, Headliners, Nyla Blackman. Skinny Fabulous. Taurus Riley. She's royal, yeah, so royal. Presented by the Super Event Management Organization. Sunday, May 5th at the Super Mini Stadium from 3 p.m. General admission, 130 EC dollars. VIP, 400 EC dollars. Get your tickets at fourcirclestickets.com. SRDF, the cell. Super Jazz. Exceeding your expectations is what we strive for at Lazarus Funeral Home. Losing a loved one isn't something you can foresee. Since the beginning, affordability has been one of our priorities. Every day we're proving that burials don't have to be expensive. If cost is a factor in your time of bereavement, call Lazarus Funeral Home. We have coffins starting at $800 plus taxes. Nothing can cause more disappointment than poor quality. Help us help you keep your last memory of your loved one secret. Make it special. Make it Lazarus Funeral Home, your friend in a time of need. Located at Bibliotech Castries at 452-7491 and New Dock Road V4 at 454-6555. Join us at the KFC Job Fair, Friday, April 5th, 2024, next to the Grosley Catholic Church from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. KFC is searching for enthusiastic team members, supervisors, and delivery drivers, cyclists, and riders. Interviews will be done on site, so come prepared to join the KFC team and receive exceptional training and amazing benefits. Take this opportunity to shape your future with KFC. See you at the job fair. and you got it. A quicker way to pay your bills online. It's fast, secure, and easy to use. No registration, no additional fees. Flow is now offering FastPay, an online service that allows you to settle your bills in less than two minutes. Need a receipt? FastPay will send it to your email immediately. Use FastPay now for convenience, safety, and efficiency at discoverflow.co slash FastPay. Is keeping you connected. It all started with a penny. For over 85 years, we have invested in our farmers, fishermen, people, and our country. When we were called to serve, we were here. We understand what is valuable to our people and our country. That is why we support all industries, including tourism. We are the bridge towards a brighter future and economic growth. When our people, government, and businesses called upon us, we were here. 85 years later, First National Bank St. Lucia Limited is here for you. In the heart of every community lies a dream waiting to come true as a journey begins. We dribble through life's hurdles, breaking down its barriers, looking beyond the horizon. Lessons are learned, friendships are forged, and strength is birthed from within. Beyond tactics and goals, we strive as a team. With discipline and perseverance, we advance. Through every kick, stumble, and victory, our lives are changing and together we rise. It's not just a game. Football is our life. The St. Lucia Semi-Pro Football League. Leveraging football to transform lives. In these modern times, the field of medicine has become so advanced that no one has to suffer any longer before they can be seen by a specialist doctor. La Clinique du Corps is proud to be the only healthcare provider in St. Lucia to offer the best and most experienced specialist doctor. Directly diagnosed spinal injury, 
numbness, lupus, after joint pain, facial nerve pain, knee, heel, and shoulder cramps, and carpal syndrome. Also available at La Clinique du Corps. Complete nerve test to detect nerve injury or muscle disease. All health insurances are accepted at La Clinique du Corps. So walk again pain-free with La Clinique du Corps. To book an appointment, please call 451-6559 or WhatsApp 721-9950. Shift into your savings gear this March at Automotive Arts as we launch our March Madness Sale. Pull up at any of our branches this March and save 20% off on all car accessories. Roll out with fantastic deals on tires of up to 30% off. And if you're missing some key tools for your toolkit, no problem. We're offering 15% off on all tools store-wide. But that's not all. Shop now and enjoy exclusive in-store specials on car care lubricants and more don't miss out on the action the march madness sale is happening right now at automotive art automotive art your car our passion terms and conditions apply see stores for details streaming live via the internet at www.power979.com this is power 979 fm for me there's a simple rule in politics Never ever be surprised by what happens in politics. The face of truth is open. The eyes of truth are bright. The lips of truth are ever closed. The head of truth is upright. The breast of truth stands forward. The gaze of truth is straight. Truth has neither fear nor doubt. Truth has patience to wait. The words of truth are touching. The voice of truth is deep. The law of truth is simple. All you sow, you reap. The soul of truth is flaming. The heart of truth is warm. The mind of truth is clear and firm through rain and storm. Facts are only its shadow. Truth stands above all. Great be the battle. Then shall win. The image of truth was this rod. The sign is on the soul of truth. Life of truth is eternal, immortal is its past, power of truth shall endure, truth shall hold to the last. I don't have to tell you things are bad, everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression, everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth, banks are going bust, shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living room. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman, because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has been... The government of Zinusha says that unemployment is on the decline. Um, also, an individual, and maybe it has some bearing from us, for us on the island, being a Democrat or a Republican is important, but it is nowhere more or near as important as being an American. Someone said that, recently deceased. Being a Democrat or a Republican is important, but it is nowhere near as important as being an American. We will discuss during the course of our broadcast as we present to you yet another edition of the most monitored talk show in the world, and that is New Spin, right here on Power 97.9 FM. We are also on the New Spin Facebook page as well as the New Spin YouTube channel. 
My name is Timothy Polio. We go up until 2 o'clock this afternoon with your calls at 452-2979, your WhatsApp messages at 716-2026, and Kimani will be going through some of your comments in the chat room. We trust that you had yourself a safe and enjoyable Easter weekend, a very long time. If only this would be the norm, this would be normalized, where you leave work on a Thursday and you return on a Tuesday. How about taking this into consideration as employers? The government of St. Lucia says that unemployment is on the decline. And just before we went or we came on the air, we received a press release, and that is from the office of the Prime Minister. And I, I will try to go through that press release and uh, see if it does make sense to you, at least part of that press release. It says there that um, 2023 was one of the best years for job creation in St. Lucia in some 16 years. Under the stewardship of Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre, last year's hiring surge significantly reduced the unemployment rate to a record low of 14% nationally. It goes on to say that unemployment in 2021 was 21.9%, 2022 was 16.5%, and 2023 was 14%. And some of the development projects that would have resulted in the reduced unemployment, according to that press release from the Office of the Prime Minister, Global Ports Holding Cruise Port Development, Marriott Hotel, also... Dreams and the Sotry, Sanders Le Talk, Expansion Slash Upgrade, Had Hotel, Cabot Residences, as well as Secrets Resort and Spa St. Lucia and Casaba Beach Resort. This, of course, is worth um, analyzing, and uh, it's a case of asking you, the people of this country, to weigh in on this development. Um, with regard to the rate of unemployment in St. Lucia. Currently, according to a press release from the Office of the Prime Minister, at 14% for 2023, 2022, 16.5%, and 2021, 21.9%. Now, this is something that is always debated. For example, in the United States, you have various quarters where unemployment figures will be would be released to the American people. I think unemployment is almost below 4% right now in the United States. And yet still, people are expressing doubt. A lot of people are saying that they are not feeling um, the impact of this. And um, this continues to be an issue, even if unemployment is below 4% in the United States. So it's a case of people who probably are not working at this time in St. Lucia. Um, I don't know, maybe we should be getting some uh, statistics from the Department of Statistics on this particular issue. Normally, that would be coming from that department, and um, the director would be um, speaking on it and would be quizzed um, by the media, but we got we got this from the office of the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. So it's a case of you can opine on it, um, you will determine whether you can give credence to it, but you know there's always been doubt expressed by many people um, whether it is St. Lucia or other parts of the world, when you hear that unemployment is on the decline, people express shock, they express dismay. But I'm sure that the office of the Prime Minister would be in a better position and the Department of Statistics um, to pronounce, make further pronouncements on this. I mean, no way. 
doubting the figures because we talk a lot about um, statistics, having the f statistics to prove whatever argument that we are making. Um, but definitely there is need for further discussion on this. And talking about further discussion, particularly from the perspective of the government, I realize that there's something happening. There's a trend where critical issues are happening in the country. I don't know if it's um, something that is affecting um, only certain sections. But you invite certain people to come on various programs to speak on those um, uh, those matters and all of a sudden get the impression that people just do not want to face the public, to answer questions from the public. Take, for example, this mini roundabout um, uh, project, which was just um, implemented by the Ministry of Infrastructure. And many people are saying that they have a great difficulty in um, driving on this um, roundabout, in understanding how it operates. Um, one would have anticipated that any offer to the authorities, in particular the Ministry of Infrastructure, to explain to the St. Lucian public, particularly the motoring public, how this works, that they would have taken the opportunity. Um, earlier today, I conversed with someone and hoping that they would have been able to appear on Newsmaker Live tomorrow along with um, the video, you know, to, to show how they should be using the roundabout. And I'm hearing that that person will not be able to appear on the broadcast today, um, tomorrow. I'm wondering whether it is a new policy of the government of St. Lucia that you should not appear on certain talk shows on the island even when it is to discuss national issues and to educate members of the public on certain things, certain decisions that are taken in their name. So I just want to put this on record that I'm trying to get somebody from the Ministry of Transport or the Ministry of Infrastructure, the relevant people, who are involved in this project to face the public so that they could explain how the roundabout will be or should be used, sorry, should be used. And um, it is proving very, very difficult so far. But I'll continue to try to see between today and tomorrow to get somebody from the Ministry of Infrastructure because the personnel there are being paid by the public, the tax-paying public. You are in the employ of the people of St. Lucia. And so far, one gets the impression that the motoring public, they do not understand, at least some of them, how to utilize that mini roundabout. It's as if the project suddenly surfaced and introduced the members of the public and they're having great difficulty in using that mini roundabout that's over in Bordeaux Orange because you realize there's always a bottleneck there. When you decide either you want to enter the SNS Plaza or you want to continue to drive up north, normally there is a buildup of vehicular traffic and we all know the resultant effect would be this would be manifesting itself um, in various parts of that road. So, again... I thought it would have been prudent for the Ministry of Infrastructure to take the opportunity to explain to you, the motoring public, explain to you, the taxpayers, how they should use that mini roundabout. But again, proving difficult to get anyone um, to avail themselves of that opportunity. So... As I, people continue to decide whether it's, uh, the public sector in particular not to appear on certain talk shows to address certain issues of importance to you, um, once they fail to avail themselves of the opportunity to do so, I will be reporting directly to you, members of the public. I will not be leaving you in the dark. The Bodily Correctional Facility. Many of you would have seen uh, videos 
of what appears to be an individual or individuals who have marked serious marks of violence on their bodies. And my information is at about 10 o'clock on Sunday that one, uh, there was one individual who was seriously injured. Um, so far, we're trying to get information from the um, Body Lake Correctional Facility, but we have not been able to do so. But there's a graphic video circulating which shows that the victim and persons, um, uh, they are seen that they, uh, they have marks of violence on the body. And uh, we are still trying to get information from the relevant authorities on this. But the incident reportedly occurred on Easter Sunday at about 10 o'clock in the a.m. And that is during recreation break. And that is between two individuals. And those individuals are on the remand block. The information that I have, again, is unofficial that the injured party was whisked away for immediate medical attention. And the other individual has been placed um, under close management. The police are currently investigating and uh, the inmate, the injured inmate is receiving medical care and that inmate is reportedly in a stable condition. Let us open the line to take your calls right now at 452-2979. That is 452-2979. Your WhatsApp messages, we're still unable to take your WhatsApp calls. So your WhatsApp messages, 716-2026. And that is 716-2026. Already have a few WhatsApp messages. And let me see if I could go through them. Um, somebody says, Tim, we need attention paid to our river in canneries. The river is eating up the road already, and the powers that be show no interest. We need a bus shelter at the main road in canneries. When it rains, people there are like mad ants looking for shelter, and I'm sick and tired when it comes to tourism. We canneries people are right next to the main tourism attraction, which is Sufre, and everything passing a street. And it pains to see there is a plan to remedy this, but no one cares. Not this government, the past one, and maybe not the one to come. But something has to give. Something has to happen in that community. Well, the MP for the constituency, that is Mr. Rain Girard, could tell you, uh, based on his um, utterances during the debate on the Estimates of revenue and expenditure, very fiery and feisty. He has invested a lot of energy on, you know, the politics and leveling allegation and accusation at certain people and so on. But he does not seem to um, want to invest a lot of that energy in things that would seriously and positively impact the people of his constituency. Um, I think we have a call. Let's go to that call right now. As we say, good afternoon to you. This is Newspin. You are on the air. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, we have lost the call. 452-2979, that's 452-2979, along with your WhatsApp calls and messages. And let me see if I have another me message to go through. Um, Tim, can you imagine that all the mention of job creation in that release is from the extreme north only? More jobs were stopped in the south of the island when they said it was 22%. Businesses are closing in the south of St. Lucia. Hello, good afternoon. This is Newspin. You are on the air. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Polio. Good afternoon to you, sir. I'm not too sure if you um, recall, I think sometime last week, um, I think in the, the DBS News it was, you all had this article about the Samoa Agreement being signed. Yes, sir. All uh, right. Yeah, DBS broke the story. I think it was on Thursday. Right. Remember that conversation I had with you about that same Samoa agreement? And then right after I called, sometime last year, Miss Sarah Flood Bobre called. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she told you that you needed to do some more homework, etc. Mm -hmm. On it. Would they, I mean, it would, would be interested in Mr. Polio if you invite her over because I guess with her legal mind, she'll be able to dissect, um, you know, what this agreement has in it 
that a lot of people in traditional countries, African, Caribbean, have been in uproar about because it speaks about LGBT rights, it speaks about a lot of different things, and even the reper- repercussions, Mr. Polio, of signing such a 20-year agreement. What is it going to be? Is it going to be sanctions? Are we going to be blacklisted? So I think somebody who is a little bit more educated... Because, because normally on, those agreements come with certain conditions. Um, yeah, but if, it, if it's a trade agreement, Mr. Polio, mm-hmm. what does it have to do with um, gender? Yeah, but what I heard from the Prime Minister of Barbados in particular on this is that it will not cause the Barbados government to change its laws, um, its national laws, to suit what is in an agreement. The agreement, yes. What, what, I, remember, I remember that came yeah. up. So, um, according to the information I have, the Samoa Agreement is based on six key priorities, human rights, democracy and governance, peace and security, human and social development. I guess you can say about this one, human and social development. You have inclusive, sustainable economic growth and development, environmental sustainability and climate change, and migration and mobility. Now, such an agreement which is considered to be controversial because I think the head of the clergy over in Trinidad advised the government, I think it was maybe last year, not to sign that agreement. Now, considering its importance, considering people have some concerns about it, one would have anticipated that the government of St. Lucia would have had public discussion before signing this agreement. So when I heard that Senusha signed the agreement, I was surprised. I'm not I was saying, surprised too, Mr. Polio, because that's exactly I'm not what the government I, should sign or not sign. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I mean, what should have happened? Um, the precursor of this should have been discussion on it involving the various stakeholders, but that it, that did not happen. I don't know if the government will say that it had discussions with the stakeholders and who the stakeholders are, maybe the church, the private sector. But as but, far as I'm concerned, there wasn't any public consultation on this. Well, I agree with you, Mr. Polio. And one of the stakeholders that I need to mention are the parents, okay, mm. and the people of this country who have to basically go through the entire transitioning of our society when it comes to accepting certain things. Now, I'm not somebody who promotes violence against anything, but when you start to give more rights to LGBT, and not only LGBT, there are other um, issues, the, 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 the so-called um, predators, like, like, the, like the, the, those that you know, want to change their name from pedophile to minor attracted persons who want the same rights as the LGBT. When these people come on board, what happens to our society? And that is where the fear is, and that is where, like you rightly said, we need to have open discussion, dialogue, even maybe a referendum. Because if this is going to change our norms, our culture, the whole ideology, when you really think about it, you, you're teaching children, and we brought up this on your show sometime last year, remember that? Yeah. The whole idea of teaching young, vulnerable, impressionable children these things at an early age. What are you going to do to society? Because it's one thing for somebody to, when they reach 18, 21, or whatever, they're old enough, they want to turn gay. That's up to them. But when you bringing it down to the minors and you encouraging also you be encouraging the mutilation of their genitalia by you know castrating them or giving them hormones to change and, and all kind of stuff, stuff like that, Mr. Polio, these people will not but be able Paula, to. I don't know. In the future, I don't you know. know if there's a link between what you're saying and there's some more agreement. I'll be very careful on this. Okay, I don't know what you're saying is and it could create any link between the. Well, two. you see, when these but, agreements, when these legal agreements come, Mr. Polio, they 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 transit they come down to us in different forms. So when we see these things, we are opening up ourselves. I think there's a, there's a term that they use, global citizens. What is a global citizen? Somebody who accepts every ideology that is brought forth to them by the ruling United Nations or all of these big organizations. We have a lot to discuss. And, we, and like I said, maybe you should bring on a legal mind like Mr. Mrs. Um, Sarah Brober, who brought it up last year. And I think she'll be able to expound on it even better than myself. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for calling, sir. Sure. 452-2979. 452-2979. Your WhatsApp messages at 716-2026. We have another call. Good afternoon to you. You are on the air. 
Uh, Timothy, a pleasant uh, good afternoon to you and your listeners all over the world. Uh, PW on the line, Timothy. Timothy, I would like to comment on what your last caller said, Timothy. The Samoa Agreement. Timothy, the government keep on signing agreements upon agreements, you know, joining so many different organizations without dialogue. Sometimes, you know, I would say the government need to come to the people and discuss what is in these agreements. Some of these, you know, some of the integrity of these agreements, Timothy, it doesn't suit the culture that we are in, who we are, Timothy, as a people, you know, and some of these things are not sustainable when it comes to the Caribbean at large. So we have to look at these things in detail, in detail. And I agree when the Barbadian government said that this agreement doesn't supersede the, the law of, of the country. So the government needs to do better than that. We need to have dialogue with the government need to come and, and, and actually tell the people, you know, what is in this, these agreements before we sign it. Because sometimes when we sign these things, we get to know, the people of the country get to know, well, you know what happened? This is, we, we, we breach these agreements. We need to know. So the, pe- the government need to stop this and, um, and, and take a, a, a path of dialogue, you know, for the citizens of this country and their rights, Timothy. I thank you. Thank you so much. We continue with your calls once again at 452-2979. WhatsApp messages, 716-2026. Good afternoon to you, Kimani. Good afternoon to you, Tim. Um, someone in the chat says, some Canaries people said that Dominic Fede has his knee on the neck. How they have the best representation, but I know for a fact that Canaries and Ancillary, the best representation was by Honorable Cyprian Lansico. Uh, any agreement signed should be explained to the people. It's that simple. Keep your people informed. I would rather government over communicate versus not communicating at all. Another comment in the chat. Um, this road about is a total confusion, just like the SLP and the SLP and a joke. Another comment: How is it possible that unemployment is so low when all the major projects that had people employed, especially in the south of the island, stopped or discontinued? Who do you think you are fooling? Someone says, when you have treaties, you don't have to change your national law, but you will have to comply with the treaty because treaty laws are superior to your national laws. Another comment. So now is the road eating, the river eating the road. Lord have mercy. Someone says, you can't find no accountability from this government. Another comment. This type of roundabouts are used in residential areas, not on a main highway. Uh, someone is asking, in which areas were these jobs created? It's below, but the minimum wage makes it feel like it's 25%. Another comment, the government should have educated the public on how to use the mini roundabout. I think there should have been how to clips for at least one month before the implication. Someone says that the people need to be paid better. Another comment, Tim, the government could never do right as far as you are concerned. Uh, Employers would lose too much revenue, Tim. Someone says, I'm sure the Employers Federation would say differently regarding the employment rate. And someone says, Cabot is not the SLP initiative. What's a message, Tim? The SLP should choke when they mention Cabot and don't include Cabot in the unemployment statistics. We have a call. 452-2979. Good afternoon. This is News Media on the air. Hello. Good afternoon. Tim, good afternoon. How are you? I'm okay, caller. Good afternoon to you. How was your long weekend? Very good. What's well, anyway? Tim, I listened to a statement that was made in Parliament during the budget debate. 
And that statement was made by the former Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Stevenson King. And he said, I think you have the clip of that because a man like you always keep in form or in touch. When he said he never walked out of Parliament, am I right? You, you saw that statement? No, I have not seen that statement. He said he never walked out of Parliament and he has since 1987, he has always been there. And then he was referred to Alan Chastney walk out of Parliament. Now, I was surprised. And he go uh, again by saying that those persons who walk out of Parliament, he was referring to the party he joined now, they, they do it because of concern. Can you imagine? He was Prime Minister, I remember very well, on a countless occasion when the same party he's a member now walk out of Parliament. And then when he said that, he checked himself because they were watching him to say whether he... And then he changed around and saying for certain, for some reason or whatever, they listen to Shalibo Party walk out for Can you imagine how sometimes we can act? And that is what we always talk about, integrity. Integrity, respect. If you want people to respect you, you must have that. Discipline. You know... And I am saying, not because you join a party, but that does not mean you must compromise your dignity and respect as though you are forcing yourself to remain a member of that party when you know very well you take so many blows by that same party when you, you were prime minister. And everybody know how you became the prime minister of St. Lucia because you could not be prime minister on your own had it been the death of the late Sir John Compton, may he still rest in peace. But then, sadly, that was the comment made in Parliament. And if you have the clip, I know later, if you want to play it, and people will hear that. To show you how sometimes we can sell. And that thing has to be, it has to be more about the money. The money, the position, rather than maintain. And I'm surprised he is Minister of Infrastructure. And the state of our roads supposed to be... And he, uh, he even said in Parliament, when he, he did... People did not call him Heavy Roller. He called himself... He gave his own self that name, Heavy Roller. And then this day, Shasta said, it is a dead roller because roller is not fast. It's a heavy equipment that doesn't go fast. You know, I'm just amazing to see the type of people that we are putting in Parliament to represent us, how easy these people can change. I'm a blessed day, Tim. All right, so thank you so much. Still to come on the broadcast, who said being a Democrat or Republican is important, but it is nowhere near as important as being an American. So let's change the words around. Being a St. Lucia Labour Party supporter or a supporter of the United Workers Party is important. But it is nowhere near as important as being a St. Lucian. This is the most monitored talk show in the world. And this lady who lost her bag with so many items, it was last week. And uh, she gave the person who got it an ultimatum. Please produce it by Friday. That was good Friday. Today is Tuesday. You think she's found it? Or what has happened? If not, we might just hear from her. It all started with a penny. For over 85 years, we have invested in our farmers, fishermen, people, and our country. When we were called to serve, we were here. We understand what is valuable to our people and our country. That is why we support all industries, including tourism. We are the bridge towards a brighter future and economic growth. When our people, government, and businesses called upon us, we were here. 85 years later, First National Bank St. Lucia Limited is here for you. Lazarus's funeral home is here for you. Lazarus' private cemetery offers a peaceful resting place for your loved ones. With tranquil settings, visitation, and reflection, we believe in the compassionate care of all our departed loved ones. Lazarus' private cemetery, let us help you create a final resting place. Make it special. Make it Lazarus' funeral home, your friend in a time of need. 
payment plans are available for tombs. Call us in Vidbuta at 452-7491 or in New Dock Road, VA4, 454-6555. Lucilex remote options are available to serve you every weekday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796-285-7859-285-3593-285-3329 or 285-8640 or send an email to customer support at lucilex.com for assistance. Lucilex encourages you to use the available options for doing business with us remotely. Join us at the KFC Job Fair, Friday, April 5th, 2024, next to the Grosley Catholic Church from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. KFC is searching for enthusiastic team members, supervisors, and delivery drivers, cyclists, and riders. Interviews will be done on-site, so come prepared to join the KFC team and receive exceptional training and amazing benefits. Take this opportunity to shape your future with KFC. See you at the Job Fair. In these modern times, the field of medicine has become so advanced that no one has to suffer any longer before they can be seen by a specialist doctor. La Clinique de Corps is proud to be the only healthcare provider in St. Lucia to offer the best and most experienced specialist doctors who are capable to first correctly diagnose and then successfully treat health conditions such as chronic back pain, spinal injury, sciatica, numbness, lupus, arthritis, joint pain, facial nerve pain, knee, heel and shoulder pain, cramps and carpal tunnel syndrome. Also available at La Clinique de Corps, complete nerve tests to detect nerve injury or muscle disease. All health insurances are accepted at La Clinique de Corps. So walk again pain-free with La Clinique de Corps. To book an appointment, please call 451-6559 or WhatsApp 721-9950. The new vibe and the lingo More upon more so the tingo Is more with flow if you didn't know True. All these deals is a winner okay. More, more upon more upon more with flow More data, more talk for sure More WhatsApp, video cast app Unlimited talk so you not stop chat Flow prepaid combo plans just got better Loaded with even more data and unlimited talk Take advantage of WhatsApp and all its features With our new prepaid plans Unleash your creativity with more social media Dial star 129 number sign to activate Now that's the new vibe in the lingo Yes More upon more sell the tingo It's more with flow now you really know Catch it now All these deals make you save more Get more, more. Nightmares is your dependable neighborhood fallacy. You'll notice that upon entry, you are greeted by caring professional staff, attentive to your every need. Your prescriptions are always treated with a high degree of confidentiality, and we pride ourselves on providing speedy, efficient service. We carry a wide array commonly requested over-the-counter products, and our prices are very competitive. We offer blood pressure testing, blood sugar, and cholesterol testing. We're open to fill your prescriptions Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Come visit Sadhu's Gas Station on the Miku Highway or call us at 572-6840 or WhatsApp 461-6840 for more information. Night Meds Pharmacy. We are your community med store. Shift into your savings gear this March at Automotive Arts as we launch our March Madness Sale. Pull up at any of our branches this March and save 20% off on all car accessories. Roll out with fantastic deals on tires of up to 30% off. And if you're missing some key tools for your toolkit, no problem. We're offering 15% off on all tools store-wide. But that's not all. Shop now and enjoy exclusive in-store specials on car care, lubricants, and more. Don't miss out on the action. The March Madness Sale is happening right now at Automotive Arts. Automotive Arts, your car, our passion. Terms and conditions apply. See stores for details. Transforming St. Lucia through football innovation and
and excellence. The St. Lucia Semi-Pro Football League provides a pathway for the professional and personal development of young footballers, leading to community enhancement across Ireland. Great opportunity. In 2024, 10 district leagues will compete for the Premier Cup and 9 district leagues will face off for the Super Cup. 81 games in 4 venues. Come support your community as you witness the first ever St. Lucia Semi-Pro Football League Championships. Competitive football, passionate players and striking goals. In collaboration with the government of St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Football Association, the Semi-Pro Football League is leveraging football to transform lives. And so the referee brings the 90 minutes to an end. Sufre Jazz, the ultimate experience. On the fringe of St. Lucia Jazz, yet taking main focus is the Sufre Jazz, the ultimate experience. Featuring Donaldson Legend, Future Lights, Rob Zai and Finesse, TYP, Ricky T, Jettison John, Headliners, Nyla Blackman. Skinny Fabulous. Taurus Riley. She's royal, yeah, so royal. Presented by the Sufra Event Management Organization. Sunday, May 5th at the Sufra Mini Stadium from 3 p.m. General admission, 130 EC dollars. VIP, 400 EC dollars. Get your tickets at fourcirclestickets.com. SRDF, the cell. Sufra Jazz. Later in the broadcast, we might be able to play you a clip of uh, that religious leader over in Trinidad and Tobago um, taking issue with the Samoa Agreement. So we'll do that a little bit later. But let's continue with your calls at 452-2979, 452-2979. Please send me your WhatsApp messages via 716-2026. Good afternoon to you. This is Newspin. You are on the air. Tim. Good afternoon to you, caller. How are you doing, big man? All right. How about you? Yeah, not too much. Mm -hmm. How's your weekend? All right. Very good. Okay, Kimani, all right? I'm all right, sir. Yeah, Tim, let me tell you, I don't want to do much comment on that thing yet, but as you said, when you heard that, it did something to me. When I heard of our Prime Minister sign whatever he signed with the UN. Well, he did not sign it. He revealed that St. Lucia had signed it. So somebody, some diplomat, signed it on behalf of St. Lucia. What was that thing? Sorry, the old language very bad. Yeah, I'm just right. saying to you that the agreement was not signed directly by the Prime Minister. It was yeah. signed on behalf of St. Lucia by a diplomat. Yeah, well, whoever signed it on our behalf, mm -hmm. I think those things are very dangerous. I'm not going to go far into that because I'm doing some research on that, that UN thing and so on. But what I know about it so far, see, it surprised me. Even before I went and do some research, when I heard that the prior, the whoever signed on the behalf of St. Lucia, I said, man, come on, something like that. I barely cried. I said, something like that has to be come put before the people. It's not only one party or one politician, whatever, that's going to face the consequences if there are any of our, t whatever we sign on the behalf of St. Lucia. It's St. Lucia. So things like that, you have to bring it before the public. It might even go out for a vote and see how many people support it. But anyway, what I just want, I'm going to comment more on that later on when I really finish what I'm doing. But what I'm saying, I heard a top host, top show host, whatever they call them, I think moving forward. I heard that gentleman speak, I think, Easter holiday or when. Man, that thing surprised me. With one voice, he's talking about peace, as far as I understand. On the other hand, He's promoting division. After this country, I've been so much in chaos and division. Never have seen it like that before. He's saying one thing and in the other breath is another thing. As I said, he was just promoting more division in this country. And that's what I call party hacks. And I don't know what people say. You know what this guy, what, what he reminded me of? The hypocrisy in this country. Full of that in this country. And that's what dividing this country and bringing all this hatred and all these sorts of things. He reminds me about the Pharisees in the scriptures. They tell people to do one thing, and on the other hand, they themselves don't even do it. They were, that's why Jesus had to call them, you hypocrites. Outside, 
the tomb yes, you are like a tomb outside is beautiful but inside is full of dead men bones i just pray to god that we all in these countries change our attitude do not be hypocrisy hypo do not be so hypocrisy in this country which is killing this country we got to come out and speak according to the word of god don't speak about color and everything like that but speak according to the word of god tim i'm going to do some more rituals on that and yeah. i'll come back to you have a nice okay day. you too thank you so much for calling uh, let us hear from that uh, trinidadian leader i just stumbled upon this um clip moment um moments ago and just want to share the contents with you. That statement was made sometime last year. Today is a very special day in the world. It's a once in a generation day. Today, 79 nations are meeting. The African, Caribbean and Pacific nations are meeting to sign a document. And it's an EU agreement with the African, Caribbean, and, and Pacific countries. And the document is written as a trade agreement and as agreement of, of support financially, etc., etc., for the African, Caribbean, and Pacific nations. But embedded in that agreement, and when it is signed, it is for 20 years, it cannot be revoked. When it embedded in that agreement is anyone who signs that agreement will have abortion legislation in their countries. They will have to impose abortion legislations, um, trans transgender, um, LBGTQ, um, comprehensive sex education, a whole range of values will be imposed because of the signing of the document. And what a wonderful day to have this reading. That leaders are not there for themselves, they are there for God. And they don't represent their ideology or their, their need to beg or their need to find whatever. They're there to represent what is right, what is true, what is noble and what is beautiful. That's what leaders are there for. That's why they are elected. And, and the, the terrible thing is that we don't have a, a culture of advocacy in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago with our leaders. We put them there and we think, okay, they run themselves for the five years and then after the five years, we decide to put them back or change them. And we don't see democracy as an engagement with the leadership in an ongoing conversation about what is good, true, noble, and beautiful for the nation. And so we put them there and well, it's their business. But if they sign this, for 20 years, the nation is going to be in trouble. For 20 years. For 20 years. Now, people think that we are in a post-colonial society. And I keep hearing the term and I keep asking myself, I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing more colonial than LBGT ideology. Nothing more colonial than that. Biden has a document that he has signed that every department of America interfacing with every other country must make this a mandate in any relationship between the states. The EU is imposing upon us a ideology that is not ours and a value system that is not ours. And if we don't understand and wake up and smell the coffee quickly, we will find ourselves with values, with laws, with, with expectations, and with, with things being touted as rights that have nothing to do with us Caribbean people. Wake up and smell the coffee. If they're far away, it's right here. Thank God I understand that our government is not signing the document today. Thank God for that.
Thank God for that. That our, our government got wind of it, has seen and understood, and they're saying they don't have enough information to be able to sign today. Thank God for that. Jamaica came out clearly and said, we are not for sale. But we are not for sale, sorry. They came out up front publicly and said, we're not for sale. It's the rest of the small islands of the Caribbean that I worry about today. Because whoever signs that document will then have to impose laws on their people that are not in keeping with the culture values of us Caribbean people and it will be an, a colonial imposition one more time on small fragile states on Africa, Pacific and us here in the Caribbean. Now read, read, let me go back to what the scripture says. I'm not talking, I'm talking about what the scripture says. Listen to what it says. If as administrators of their kingdoms you have not governed justly nor observed the law nor behaved as God would have you behave he will fall on you swiftly and terribly. Ruthless judgment is reserved for the high and mighty. The lowly will be compassionately pardoned. The mighty will be mightily punished. We can't keep our eye on the short-term benefit of a trade treaty promising us trinkets and, and, and glitter. We have to keep our eyes on the long-term benefit of the kingdom of God, on heaven itself, and on what God has asked us and put into our hands, both to foster and to protect. The dignity of the human person is not for sale. It is not for sale. And we, today, I see today as a day of mourning. I, I am relieved that Trinidad is not signing just yet. But I am not relieved that 79 nations are coming together today with a document that will impose upon them conditions that many have not understood, the sub-clauses and the, the, the hidden agendas in those documents. Preaching on against the Samoa Agreement, Archbishop of Trinidad and Tobago, Charles Gordon. And uh, just want to report that in the case of St. Lucia, the island signed the agreement. I think somebody, a source told me that it was signed sometime in March, late last month. Um, and somebody sent me a WhatsApp message and pertaining to the Sumo agreement saying simply, Tim, are you saying that the diplomat has more power than the prime minister? That's not what I'm saying. Um, the individual, somebody called earlier on and claimed that the prime minister signed the agreement, giving the impression that the prime minister personally signed the agreement. Now, a diplomat standing on behalf of St. Lucia, um, I imagine, would have gotten permission from the government of St. Lucia before signing. So, what I wanted to clarify is not that um, the, the agreement would have been signed without the knowledge of the Prime Minister or the government of St. Lucia. But I'm saying it was not signed directly or personally by the Prime Minister. We continue with your calls at 452-2979. WhatsApp messages 716-2026. We have a WhatsApp call. Uh, we have a call, sorry. Good afternoon. You're spinning on the air. Yeah, Tim. Hi, good afternoon to you. By time, I call again. Thanks very much for that clip you played there. Mm -hmm. I really want to appreciate it. But one thing I want to say again. Tim, look at the hypocrisy that's in it. We got rid of the, not the CCJ, the, that court in, in Europe. What's his name? What, the Privy Council? The what? Yeah, the Privy Council. We got rid of it because we say we can rule ourselves and do this and so on. Mm -hmm. But look at the thing they say that somebody sent on our, our behalf or going to send our behalf. Who is going to rule us? our daily lives and so on the same white man we preach we don't like and so on you see the hypocrisy in that and as the guy say he's afraid and he's scared for the caribbean the small country i myself is more than scared for us take at him thanks okay. very much for that please thank you so much for calling sir the uh, messages in the chat room kimani what is happening there 
Someone says, what does that have to do with our culture? He should be saying that it is contrary to God's word. So if it was within the culture of the islands, he would be in agreement. Uh, another comment, someone says, church leaders need to preach, thus saith, saith the Lord. Another comment, this is a great point, since so many decry the imposition of colonization and the influence in our Caribbean territories. Our church leaders are not saying anything about that document. Someone else says, the birds want to be bees, some bees want to be birds, some birds are not sure if they're bees or really birds. Another comment, it's time we drink the coffee. For too long we've been smelling this coffee. Someone says, can a diplomat, diplomat sign any kind of document on behalf of St. Lucia without the knowledge of the Prime Minister? If that's the case, then we don't need a Prime Minister to represent us. Uh, St. Lucians can go to see their specialist under what insurance? That's it in the chat room, Tim. Thank you so much, Kimani. We'll return to you in just a moment with another update as to what is being said, the discussion that is taking place in the chat room. We have a call. Good afternoon to you. This is New Spin. You're on the air. Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon to you. I want to have a bite of that, um, that subject, but before I do that, I want to um, correct something. Um, at the house, which somebody recalled earlier on, Stevenson King said, in effect, that he had given his name, he had, he had baptized, christened himself, named himself Heavy Roller. Yeah. And so it's no big deal that Alan Shastney was um, making jokes about the Heavy Roller. But do you know the origin of the Heavy Roller name, Tim? I don't know the origin, but I know that it was, he said that he christened himself in 1992. The heavy ruler, but I don't know the origin. Don't know what would have. George Adam was it? Are you surprised to hear that? I am surprised. You surprised that George Adam given Judge Adam no. has given everybody in part. No, no, no. But if 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 King is saying that he was the one who christened himself the heavy I'm ruler. Okay. Hold on. Hold let on. Me, let hold me on, just hold push on, you hold a little on. bit. Now hold on. I'm surprised that you are telling me that George Adam was the one who christened him. I know George was capable of doing it with his quick quack. And exactly. the Crusader. All right. That's what. That's the doubt I have. And you understand? Who do you think called Bousquet Fetty? George. George, yeah. We could Tujusu. go down the line. Tujusu. Eh? Tujusu. Tujusu. Well, mm -hmm. that's another story again. And, and Limping. Well, that, that's another story mm -hmm. for another time. Mm -hmm. But um, I, what, why do you suppose Stevenson King would tell the house that he named himself Every Roller? Be because of his political astuteness and because of his several because of what? his because of his several electoral victories ruling over his opponents uh, 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 why would <laughs> ruling over his opponent there are a lot of connot connotations with that you know no 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 i mean i mean if your if your mind is in the gutter but we're talking politics and we're talking oh, electoral I victories i'll talk about the mind in the gutter in a minute yeah <laughs> The point is, um, George Adlam called him that. When 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 um, Stevenson King came into office, I have the photograph still. A lean young man, good looking. 1987. 1987, good looking young man. Okay? He was working at the time for Flosak, etc., etc. Yeah. George Adlam called him the heavy roller because of his girth. So neither Alan Chasney nor King knew the origin of that, that name. George Adlam invented it based on the size of Stephen King's wish line at the time. So then, so then you're saying um, Mr. King lied then? Well, you can say what you want. Yeah. And in any event, it's a misnomer. Eh? The proper word for that thing is steamroller. And that's what, you, that's, that's what we call a heavy roller over here on the roads and stuff. It's steamroller. And I don't know that George didn't know that his steamroller and that he gave a particular um, uh, needle there, calling him the heavy roller. Well, he would have because done that. He would have done that for effect. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, communicating so, to the people. So I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, but you know, you have to ask yourself the question: Why would Stevenson can call himself that? Because he didn't. It's it's um it's George Adlam who did. Um, now the other now let me defend him now. I'm talking about mine in the gutter. 
You know what leapfrogging is, Tim? Yeah. Well, for those who are in Lucia, because it seems it's not well known what, what leapfrog is. Nothing that has to do with exercise and whatnot is well known in St. Lucia. A game in which players take turns leaping over one another, uh, leaping over another player, bent over from the waist. As an exercise, as fun, it's school children do it. Even grown-up students do it. And, and re, re, when, you, when you leap, some of them would deliberately stand up and you're in trouble. You can just imagine it, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a well-known game by the and its name. It's, it is called um, Sleep Frog, etc. But Stevenson King, I know all about that. Stevenson King decided he was going to participate. In fact, I'm not so sure I didn't suggest it. That, he, they, that the leaders of government should participate more in the jazz festival, uh, you know. And somehow he found himself on, on the stage or he was called out uh, um, think, by, by yeah. Wycliffe Jean. Yeah. Wycliffe Jean is a well-known musician and heterosexual, Okay. Homosexual? Hetero. Oh, heterosexual. Okay, I said... In other words, yeah. he's well known as a coxman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Lucian ja language. Mm. All right? So, I just want to clear him up on that. So, when he called King and asked him to, to, to assume the position of leapfrog, it was at the time all those guys were doing Jimmy Flicks and, and, and little feats on, on stage. It was the thing on rock and roll stages. And there was nothing new about that. And you had um, Clinton pulling his sax out, his saxophone out of the strangest places and so on and so on. But in St. Lucia, I defended King at the time, you know. In St. Lucia, the moment that it came out, <laughs> there was a picture, I think, too. Yeah. And, um, and a King went there and I'm not dressed up like it. He, he, he was in a hot, what we call a hot shirt and everything. He went there with an attitude to participate. And like I said, I don't want to take credit, but I'm almost sure I said to him, you should participate, you know, it'd be good participating on stage. And so the, the guy leaped over him and immediately I wrote the story. Uh, well, George wrote the first story um, calling it, um, attributing um, homosexual. Uh, um, what was it? What I'm looking at? I'm trying to be careful here. Um, attributing the whole thing to something homosexual, suggestive of homosexuality, which was absolute bullshit. Okay. But the Lucians have their own intentions, they have their own notions, they have their own secret knowledges. As far as I was concerned, it was a nice move, and he, he, the king was pretty high, and, and the, the guy jumped pretty high, showing his, his athleticism. But there were those who chose to do otherwise with leapfrog. So I actually wrote an article defensive of it, and I will continue to defend um, the man on that score, and, and talking about mines in the gutter. So just because the guy bent over and you had a star leap over him, that made him all kinds of things by people with minds in the gutter, to use your phrase. All right. But in the so world of, in the world of politics and knowing your environment and the mentality of the, the, the your audience, you have to be extremely careful um, what you do because you do not want whatever you do to be seen in a particular in a particular light that certainly that's the problem would, would, would not that would is, not work in your favor that is the problem we have in this country subtle blackmail so that if i were to go and bend over and tell the guy jump over me etc mm -hmm. that would make me a faggot you know so to, so not, so i wouldn't do it just because i'm afraid somebody might say i'm a faggot whether i am or not who gives, who gives a crap we are, we are blackmailed at every turn. You see what the priest was talking about there? All of that falls in the same bracket. Just like Alan can't go in the back of his car and, and in, his, in, his, in, his, in his truck and, and give the seats to the others. He mustn't do that because if he does that, the chances are they will say he's a footman. And, or, 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 King said he, he, he referred to him without mentioning him, but the picture called him um, garbage to be dumped. That's, that's what our leaders do. 
all these subtle blackmail things and nasty name because calling. Because again, they understand the audience and the print they, the gallery. They understand the audience. I mean, if George Orlam would write that, if I because the people who were totally against um, King at the time when that incident occurred um, with Wyclef Jean. Of course, right? George Orlam was critical. One. They would they would have been supporters of the Senushi Labour Party. Exactly. Who now, who now, several years later, not see anything wrong with it because he's now part of the government of the SLP. Yeah, of course. Um, w w with all the innuendos that were being leveled at him, th never mind that. Today, he's probably the most macho man in the country. But um, they still have problems with the, with, with the, st with the rule of business, etc. But it shows what we are, what we are, and um, that subtle blackmail, this nasty est of, you want to tell me that a minister, a prime, a former prime minister in parliament talks about how he saw a man, he saw a picture on the internet of a man in the back of a, a truck, and um, it's a garbage truck, and they're the, 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 taking him to, to dig low. I mean, <laughs> that is what we have in Parliament, Tim. We have that in Parliament. So our minds are not about to get any click out, out, out of the gutter. And the time we take to learn those things, we might be learning how to spell. But we don't. Anyway, let me move on. I noticed that all the guys who called you with express concerns about the, um, what do you call it, the agreement? The Samoa agreement. Samoa agreement. You notice none of them told you what exactly was bothering them? Particularly no, what bothered them? No, they, no, they did not. They did not. You, don't, don't, don't you wonder why, Tim? I well, mean, apart, apart, even, from, apart from my first caller, I suspect because many people do not know about the agreement. Yeah, but he was very vague in what he was saying. Because we already have um, <laughs> acceptance here of a lot of, of what he's talking about. LGBTQ is, is accepted here, you know, man. Yeah. It, it's not in the books, but it's generally accepted. People, it's now um, politically incorrect to say, and rightly so, to, um, to, to call uh, people of certain sexual preferences, uh, but certain names and so on and so on. It's, it's, it, they just haven't changed, changed the law. And you know why they haven't changed it? Whereas, whereas the country that gave us these um, laws regarding um, homosexuality or homosexual acts, you know, the, the country that gave us that has long ago de de cleared that off their books. Huh? But we can't do it for because it's uh, not wise to do because that politically. Because we are on the plantation. We, we just, I keep no, telling no, I think, you. I think, Rick, it's, to, to put it bluntly, it's politics. It's not it's wise. Not politics. Not wise it's for not, any government to do that right now in St. Lucia. It's not politics. It's the kind of people you have, the way you have allowed your people to grow, not properly educated, no real appreciation of rights. No a real appreciation that grown-ups can do what they want in the privacy of their homes. None of that. So I am not making, speaking for or against homosexuality. It's not, my, it's not for me to do that. And, and, and those who do cite the Bible. Well, let's not even go into that one. Because even the priest who's talking there for you, his whole authority was the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, right? Yeah. But he could have talked about it in more worldly terms. George Oblon used to say, that anything you can talk about in biblical terms, you can talk. You should be able to talk about it in worldly terms as well. But they duck. A lot more and more people are moving away from the, from the church. You saw, you saw how huge his audience was. About ten people in the church. That's in, in your clip. Well, I, I didn't see the entire church. Well, I'm very observant. I saw them. <laughs> no, I, could, I could not have seen the entire church, Rick. Ah, no, no, I showed a shot mm -hmm. of him and the audience in front of him. So what, what I'm trying to tell you is. We don't stand up for anything, Tim. We don't stand up for, for, for anything at all. So that that I, I mentioned that that agreement to you several weeks ago. Huh? I also understand that overseas sources have been contacting our schools, our our, our teachers, and that in some schools. Um, the kids have been asked to, to write certain things and some of them have even walked out of classes 
there's a little rebellion going up, going on about that, you know, Tim. Yeah. So while the government is not talking, and it, it, it extends all the way to gender change transitions and whatever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is the fear mostly that people have because they more or less have accepted freedom to be homosexual or whatever, sexual preference. But what is very much bothering um, all, all these countries... You say include it in the curriculum. They don't yeah. want it included. School curriculum, yeah. they're, advi- they're advising the teachers to teach the kids to be more accepting of man-man relationships, woman-woman relationships, to teach them that, subtly teach them that. A lot of stuff already going on. But our bishop will not talk about that in great detail. Our ecclesiastical affairs minister will not talk about it in any detail. The callers who are calling you are afraid to offend, so they're not going to say anything what, what's really bothering there. But it's, a, to my mind, a very, very dangerous thing that may well... I mean, in the States now, I think it's already going on in the States, that kids are changing, transitioning to different sexes or gender, whatever, whichever one's applicable, before there are 100 pronouns. As kids, you know that? Yes, I know. The breast implants, they're having them at, as kids, all kinds of stuff going on. And, and the, the real politics is in America, where the pressure is on the presidency. The, like uh, Trump says what needs to, he needs to say, uh, as does Biden on the subject. But we, who don't like white people officially, we don't like white people, we don't like the colonials, and we want to throw out all of the colonial, colonial um, tricks, like the man said a while ago, but we will quietly embrace that with no discussion. With no discussion. Not even the women in parliament, the, the politicians in bras, have seen fit to bring this up one way or the other. But all of that is also tied up in the rape thing, in the, in the abuse thing. Nobody wants to talk, talk about it, Tim. Nobody wants to talk about it. So you, you really should, should get a copy of that thing and open this up to some serious discussion. Because if your show is the, the most monitored, and, and, and leading show, it should be touching on those things. It, it really, it's, it's education. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Rick. Talking about our Archbishop, we'll be hearing from him in just a moment. Uh, but, but before we go to the break, a um, uh, former U.S. congressman who passed away sometime last week said, being a Democrat or Republican is important, but it is nowhere near as important as being an American. Maybe we can learn something from this. Putting our country before being a supporter of the SLP or the UWP. Listen. Being a Democrat or a Republican is important, but it is nowhere near as important as being an American. Being a Democrat or a Republican is important but it is nowhere near as important as being an American. Joe Lieberman, and that's the late Joe Lieberman. The broadcast will continue in just a moment. We'll be hearing from Archbishop Gabriel Malzier, and of course, I'll continue to hear from you at 452-2979 and your WhatsApp messages at 716-2026. This is the most monitored talk show in the world, Newspin. Only one option when they arrive. Our services will make the dead look alive. With Butay and Buford accessibility. Remember, we have the only private cemetery. No one can match our prices from coffins to corsage. Personalized service you get when Lazarus takes charge. Quality service, no package to make your wallet bleed. Lazarus is your true friend in your time of need. Lucilex remote options are available to serve you every weekday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796-285-7859-285-3593-285-3329 or 285-8640 or send an email to customer support at lucilex.com for assistance. Lucilex encourages you to use the available options for doing business with us remotely. It all started with a penny. For over 85 years, we have invested in our farmers, 
fishermen, people, and our country. When we were called to serve, we were here. We understand what is valuable to our people and our country. That is why we support all industries, including tourism. We are the bridge towards a brighter future and economic growth. When our people, government, and businesses called upon us, we were here. 85 years later, First National Bank St. Lucia Limited is here for you. Catch the new vibe and the lingo. More upon more said the tingo. It's more wet flow if you didn't know. All these deals is a winner. All right. More, more pan, more pan, more wet flow. More data, more talk for sure. More WhatsApp, video, cast up, unlimited talk. So you're not stop chat. Flow prepaid combo plans just got better. Loaded with even more data and unlimited talk. Take advantage of WhatsApp and all its features with our new prepaid plans. Unleash your creativity with more social media. Dial star 129 number sign to activate. Now that's the new vibe. In the lingo. Yes. More pan more sell the tingo. Sell the tingo. It's more wet flow now you really know. Catch it now. All these deals make you save more. Get more. more. In these modern times, the field of medicine has become so advanced that no one has to suffer any longer before they can be seen by a specialist doctor. La Clinique du Corps is proud to be the only healthcare provider in St. Lucia to offer the best and most experienced specialist doctors who are capable to first correctly diagnose and then successfully treat health conditions such as chronic back pain, spinal injury, sciatica, numbness, lupus, arthritis, joint pain, facial nerve pain, knee, heel and shoulder pain, cramps and carpal tunnel syndrome. Also available at La Clinique du Corps, complete nerve tests to detect nerve injury or muscle disease. All health insurances are accepted at La Clinique du Corps. So walk again pain-free with La Clinique du Corps. To book an appointment, please call 451-6559 or WhatsApp 721-9950. Shift into your savings gear this March at Automotive Arts as we launch our March Madness Sale. Pull up at any of our branches this March and save 20% off on all car accessories. Roll out with fantastic deals on tires of up to 30% off. And if you're missing some key tools for your toolkit, no problem. We're offering 15% off on all tools store-wide. But that's not all. Shop now and enjoy exclusive in-store specials on car care, lubricants and more don't miss out on the action the march madness sale is happening right now at automotive art automotive art your car our passion terms and conditions apply see stores for details Join us at the KFC Job Fair, Friday, April 5th, 2024, next to the Grosley Catholic Church from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. KFC is searching for enthusiastic team members, supervisors, and delivery drivers, cyclists, and riders. Interviews will be done on-site, so come prepared to join the KFC team and receive exceptional training and amazing benefits. Take this opportunity to shape your future with KFC. See you at the Job Fair! In the heart of every community lies a dream waiting to come true as a journey begins. We dribble through life's hurdles, breaking down its barriers, looking beyond the horizon. Lessons are learned, friendships are forged, and strength is birthed from within. Beyond tactics and goals, we strive as a team. With discipline and perseverance, we advance through every kick stumble and victory our lives are changing and together we rise it's not just a game football is our life the st lucia semi-pro football league leveraging football to transform lives Super Jazz, the ultimate experience. On the fringe of St. Lucia Jazz, yet taking main focus, is Super Jazz, the ultimate experience. Featuring Donaldson Legend, Future Lights, Rob Zai and Finesse, TYP, Ricky T, Jettison John, Headliners, Nyla Blackman. Skinny 
fabulous. Taurus Riley. She's royal, yeah, so royal. Presented by the Sufra Event Management Organization. Sunday, May 5th at the Sufra Mini Stadium from 3 p.m. General admission, 130 EC dollars. VIP, 400. Get your tickets at fourcirclestickets.com. SRDF, the cell, Sufra Jazz. So on a Good Friday, Archbishop delivered the Passion of the Christ sermon at the church service. And uh, he did say that we should seek to discover the Judas in us. Let us hear from Archbishop Gabriel Malzier. Today, we all challenge to discover the Judas in us. I remember when I was growing up, Good Friday was a somber and serious day for my family. We were on our P's and Q's as to what we should, we could do and what we couldn't do. If we did something contrary to what our parents expected of us, they would call us in Creole, Jida. You remember that? Jida. And that was a really bad name. Our reflection today indicates that we are all Jidas. As we are all packed with motive, we are all packed with motive, some of which are not so good. Otherwise, we would have a perfect Christian society in St. Lucia today. We would have the most loving church in the world and we would be the most genuine group of people one could find on the face of the earth. But you and I know that it is not so. Instead, we have an escalation of the incidence of violent crimes in our midst. We have many angry people among us. For whatever social, domestic, religious or job related reason, we have hatred and bitterness among us. We have people who fight each other down. We have calumny and jealousy. We have outright greed in all its dimensions, whether it's for money, for possession, for positions, for possessive relationships or otherwise. We have all these among us. There is our opportunity. As much as we would not want to be called Jida, if we continue as if it is business as usual, viewing the whole period of Lent and the glorious celebration of Easter merely as a fixture on the Catholic calendar and do nothing to change our relationship with God and with our neighbor, we will be nothing more than Jidas. Archbishop Gabriel Malzer, head of the Roman Catholic Church in St. Lucia, delivering his Good Friday, the Passion of the Christ service, and um, speaking about Judas. And according to him, there's a Judas in all of us, particularly based on what is happening in our country right now, the violence, the betrayal that takes place ever so often, uh, the fight for um, position and money, and also the betrayals, which I said um, earlier on, and the jealousy that occurs in St. Lucia. What is in the chat room, Kimani? In the chat room, someone says, yes, question Joachim about the document. Another comment, I don't think that being part of a political party is important. In fact, party is not even mentioned in our constitution, so how comes it seems to be the most important in the realm of governance? That's what abuse does. You are taught to do something over and over, thinking it's important when it's not. Another comment, the hardest thing for St. Lucians to do is to look past red and yellow. Uh, another comment, he deliberately did not sign it. He allowed the diplomat to sign it to carry the blame. As he said, he knows how to play the politics. Uh, someone else says, did the Prime Minister read the agreement before he gave the green light to sign it? Again, I repeat, St. Lucians need a revolution. I call on the young people to rise up. 
victim, then I hear that once this document is signed, it cannot be revoked. If that's the case, don't you think that the government should have met of the public and private sectors, even with the opposition, and to take it to the airwaves to hear what the citizens have to say on this? But like the Prime Minister is always playing the pointing finger game, so now he's putting it right in the hands of a diplomat and not his. But we know that the diplomat didn't just sign without the knowledge of the PM. Sad. The PM must be there just laughing as always like when he said one dog, we are going to get just one dog. And that agreement, um, as the Archbishop said, is for 20 years. That has been confirmed. Mm -hmm. It's for 20 years. Another comment. I'm watching Jamaica News. They're already complaining on the shortage of yellow yam and scotch bonnet peppers. Farmers not planting food anymore. The farmers need fertilizer. Their crops are dying from disease and extinction. Uh, another comment in the chat. Someone says, did the Archbishop miss the main one for political reasons? That's it. Thank you so much for those messages. Uh, let's see if we have uh, some more of your calls. Once again, 452-2979. We have a call in line. Good afternoon to you. This is Nios Pinyon, dear. Hello, good afternoon to you. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon to you. How are you? I'm okay. How about you? You enjoy your Easter? Very good. Yeah, it was a good one. Did you go out to church, Timothy? No, ma'am. I don't have to go to church to have a good Easter. Yeah, it's good to fellowship, Timothy. I knew you would answer me that. <laughs> you don't have to go to church. You, so all churches should just close down because we don't have to go to church. Uh, Am what, I right, Timothy? What impact do you think this would have on, on, it on would, our society? There would be, there's a difference. There's a difference. Yeah. Going to church and fellowshipping, there's a difference. Don't try and say you you can I'm, do everything at home. I'm just asking the question. Uh -uh. Anyway, Timothy, mm -hmm. yes, that's why I called you. Um, Tim, I want to speak to you about something. Mm -hmm. I notice whenever Rick calls you, Rick says nobody stands for certain things. Well, I'm going to stand for something today against Rick. Rick makes a lot of good contributions, but um, I think he needs to understand that he's speaking to persons in the community, and um, and it goes outside too, and not because other people does it that he should do it. Um, the way that he is, he expresses himself sometimes, it it really comes out. I mean, Rick is higher than that. Rick knows the entire dictionary, if I would say. He can use words instead of some of the the, the words that he uses, like the BS and uses it out and, and the other things that he says. He doesn't have to do that. He can use other words. He wants to change this, the way things are going, change it in the right direction. He says persons don't stand for certain things. I stand for certain things. I don't like people to talk to me and use those words towards me, no. And he will say, oh, who are you? I am I. You understand me, Timothy? Yes, and another thing too, I think sometimes, I don't know, I think you're afraid of Rick. <laughs> and because of that now, you allow Rick to do no, what no, he no, wants, no. say what I'm he wants, no, 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 no. give him enough time. Let me defend there's myself. A, there's a no, no, fear no, no, you no. have of him. Uh, no, no, Don't no. be afraid of Rick. I am not afraid of Rick. There's a fear no, you no, have on, of Rick. On, uh, Rick, Rick is well educated yet not, in his field. But, but, you're not but listening. that doesn't mean he should intimidate you. you you're not give listening. Rick a certain amount of time and then allow others to come on. Because sometimes Rick Call takes about 15 minutes and then you just close down. I am not intimidated by no one. I want okay. to let you know that. I am not okay. intimidated So that's by my perception. Anyone. Leave me in my okay. perception. Eh? I'll stay well, and watch that's, you now. That's your perception. That's my perception. But, okay. but I'm more tolerant of certain callers than others. Yeah, but then... But okay? then that's um, what it is. It, it, it looks like you are afraid of him. But I'm and saying... And he intimidates you. I am he's saying... Able to speak. I am and it's saying not everything no, he says is... is I am is, saying is, no is. to everything that you just said there. So irrespective of your belief... <laughs> What you perceive? Maybe you know, sometimes I agree with you, and you sometimes know. when I when when it's right, I don't. When I see it, and there's nothing wrong with I you disagreeing, but not everything you say is factual. It's true. It is. What yeah? I'm saying there is factual. No, that's you what, allow him to say certain things. Why you don't that, allow everybody else to say? That is your perception. Carl. Why that don't you allow perception. other persons to say some of the things that Rick says? No, you you put you you cut them off, or you tell them it's wrong. So you have to tell Rick, no, Rick, not on my program. Don't You're use okay. those words. You know, Some people and we're dealing with children. Children are now on vacation, listening to this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to let's put the bar a little higher. Um, Tim, are you you good at it? Don't be afraid of Rick. Tell Rick, no, don't <laughs> use that on my program. Well, why you keep saying that when that is not true? Because you're afraid of him. That is your perception, man. That, 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 that is that is your perception. That. He can feel you. No, 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 no. I'm not afraid of Rick. Okay. I'm Let's so not afraid of Rick. You saying I'm afraid Let's of him? I'm saying alone. In I am future, not afraid of Rick. When Rick okay? comes on, please mm. explain to Rick that he is speaking to persons on the air. 
use the correct words because Rick know a lot of words. Let me tell you, whereas I might know two, two words, Rick know a million. But what is so offensive if somebody says BS? No, 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 he didn't say BS. He said the full word. And we don't want children to speak to us like that, do we? Do we don't want our friends to speak to us like that, do we? Why should Rick come and speak to me like that? No. But call up. We have to stand to the sea. We he himself says solutions don't stand. And we, you know we're ignorant already. Yeah, but today, I'm standing. Tell Rick when he comes on that program mm. to speak properly. And don't come and use words on me that I... It, 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 it's offensive. Okay? Now he'll tell me, oh, but everybody speaks like that. No. People don't speak like that with me. No, 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 no. People don't speak like that with me. Tell Rick when he comes on that station, speak properly. Now, Timothy, mm-hmm. that's not what I call you for. Okay. What's the rest? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just one of it. The next one. Mm-hmm. What I listened there, I listened to you there with that, um, the priest who spoke. Um, our Christian council need to come out and speak about this, you know, Timothy. That seems to be on the cover all the time. And they will just pass that legislation and we cannot say anything. I think they need, the Christian council need to come and tell us what is going on. Or they need to find out from the government. I'm sure they know what's going on. Need to find out from the government fully what is going on. I cannot accept that. With what? What is going on with, with what? What the gentleman was explaining there, the guard from Trinidad. The Samoa agreement. Right, that mm-hmm. agreement. We need to know what is going on. Don't just come last minute and just throw things at us. And the poor opposition just have to walk out because all of you are going to pass it anyway. You understand me? Timothy, they need to come out. The Christian council need to come out and voice what's going on voice their opinions and and statements and come out and say what they think is right and what they think is wrong don't just allow us to just things just go on how it is no 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 even if there are 17 in there and there are just two oppositions we the people supposed to be the government you know okay we can make decisions so timothy i'm just saying that the christian council need to come out Maybe you can have one of their members come out and explain to persons what they what are their intentions to to go against that. Okay. All right. Okay, thank, Timothy. Thank and you don't so much. forget about um our friend. Eh? Who's that? Have a good day. All Timothy. right. <laughs> thank you so much for calling. Um, born news: The Prime Minister of Saint Lucia is currently on vacation, March 29th to April the fourth. And uh, our final feature. I don't know if you have any comments in the chat room before we. Uh, turn our attention to our final feature, which is the newspaper news of the day. Kimani. Just one comment. Mm-hmm. Someone says, Tim, I hope this caller makes regular people contributions to newspin. All right. Finally, our newspaper news of the day. Thousands of angry Israelis took to the streets on Monday for the third consecutive night to demand Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the demonstrators say they are not going away. So demand that Prime Minister Netanyahu resigns. All right, so that's the broadcast. Thank you so much for watching and listening to the most monitored talk show in the world, and that is Newspin. Join us same time tomorrow afternoon, 12.30, for another broadcast. Goodbye.